Hi, my name is John Fickstone. I'm Emeritus Professor of the History of Science, Technology and Medicine. Um, this is one of the many welcomes for the Congress to Manchester. The University, as you'll see from many signs, now dates itself from 1824. That relates to the founding of the Mechanics Institute, that's the technical education side of the University, which came together with the uh, University College side, as it were, in 2004. Mechanics Institute, of course, associated with John Dalton and to a limited extent with his great pupil, uh, James Prescott Jewell. But if we were walking around the main campus, that dates from 1873 when Owens College moved there, having spent 20 years in a house in the centre of the city which once belonged to Richard Cobden, free trade advocate and phrenologist. I mean the uh, main club there is the main building at the back where Jevons worked, W.S. Jevons, and where physics was done in the basement by Balfour Stewart. You can see the museum which began as a middle class museum in the city and was housed with the university from the 1880s and the big ceremonial hall and the library 1890s, 1904 which were essentially funded by money left by, by Joseph Whitworth, the Manchester engineer. But you can also see the buildings that constituted about a quarter or a third of the initial build in 1873 on this new site and there for chemistry. So if we're tracing through the history of sciences on the university campus, the first really big development is chemistry from the beginning with two huge teaching laboratories set up by Roscoe. Roscoe is a pupil of um, Bunsen at Heidelberg came from a very distinguished Liverpool family and married into a very rich and powerful Manchester family. So he was very well placed for the social advancement of science. We can move from the chemistry labs that he founded to the further labs that were the home to many important organic chemists and also to physical chemists including Michael Polanyi. Round in the back quad you can see the medical school which was once a proprietary, Dr. Owen School, came onto the campus in 1874, massively extended in the 1890s. For engineering, well in that back quad there used to be an engineering lab set up by Osborne Reynolds of the Reynolds Numbers, and over on the Coopton Street you'll see a lab built in 1909, named for Whitworth, and one of the early occupants of that lab, at least from time to time, was Ludwig Wittgenstein, who was a research student here in aeronautical engineering. Also in a room overlooking Coupon Street, there was the botanical work done by Marie Stokes, famous now for her book on Marie Love and her work on birth control, but when she was here in the Edwardian period before the Great War, it was as a specialist in fossil botany. Then we come to, in a sense, one or two of the highlight buildings in Manchester. The room in which I'm sitting is in the laboratory which was built by Schuster, Professor of Physics, about 1900, and which from 1907 to 1919 housed Ernest Rutherford and his great team, including Niels Bohr, Hans Geiger, Hevesy, many others who essentially laid the basis for nuclear physics in this place at that time. And the succession is not bad afterwards. Following Professor with Lawrence Bragg, after that Patrick Blackett, and it comes through rather grandly uh, to our recent Nobel Prizes in Physics, uh, two Russians who worked on this astonishing material called graphene. And the building next door a rather plain looking building, was once the computing laboratory of the University of Manchester, built in 1950. Behind it is the, what was once the Electrotechnics Department, an extension of physics, where in 1948 the Manchester computer first operated. That's the first 
electronic digital stored program computer. And that was the reason why Alan Turing came here in 1948 and worked here until his death, working partly on ideas around thinking machines and partly on the formation of form in biological organisms. So that's just some of the highlights. Uh, it's a pretty stunning street we have outside here. Well, that's just a quick introduction. Uh, there will be plenty of opportunities at the Congress to learn more about the history of science, technology and medicine in Manchester. There will be banners, there will be walks around campus and other walks around the city. And on the Tuesday afternoon, there will be two sessions. The first one specifically about how we're using Manchester Heritage, how we're using rooms like this, for example. And the second one, to get together informally all the Congress members and indeed some other local historians who are interested in analysing science and industry and their relations in this city or indeed in comparable cities.